Welcome back to Cox Connections, a program that provides up-to-date information on events that affect you, our customers. You see them at night, walking the streets, and they look so young. These youngsters are part of our most vulnerable population. Stand Up for Kids Hampton Roads provides life-saving outreach services to homeless, street kids, and at-risk youth. Here to tell us about the program is Executive Director Bobby Sheeran. Bobby, welcome to the show. Thank you. So tell us a little bit more about Stand Up for Kids Hampton Roads. Stand Up for Kids Hampton Roads um, has been in Hampton Roads or at the Virginia Beach Oceanfront since 1991, although a lot of people don't know about us, but the most important thing is that the kids that we serve know about us. They find us and we just help stabilize their lives, um, keep them alive until we can get them under a roof and get them on their way to becoming young adults. So why is a program like Stand Up for Kids so necessary? It's necessary because these kids, most of the kids we deal with are from 17 to 24 years of age, and most of them could go into an adult shelter, but these youth don't do, don't do very well in an adult shelter. Adult shelters have uh, strict rules, and as we all know, youth, uh, you need to be a little bit more lenient with them a little bit more understanding and have some more patience. There are some statistics around the number of kids who, uh, who are impacted annually, both by Stand Up for Kids and then just generally kids who are, who are homeless and at risk. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right, I believe there's, uh, let's say 1.7 to 2.5 million uh, you homeless youth out on the street today. Almost three million yes. homeless children in the country. Wow. And just in, uh, let's just say in the city of Virginia Beach numbers that we typically look at, uh, there's over 800 homeless youth enrolled in the city of Virginia Beach public schools. My goodness. And you, you wouldn't really, you don't really know that when you're just looking at them, but you can imagine how difficult it is for a child who doesn't have a stable roof over their head to get themselves together and go to school and be and concentrate on their learning. Um, it's difficult for us of those that have a stable life, let alone for those that Somebody have to deal with these kinds of things. All of those challenges. Yes. Among the services that you provide for the children who you reach is life skills training. So obviously, young people who are 17 to 24. Um, you know, you're working to teach them sustaining life skills. Tell us a little bit more about that. And it's probably the skills that we all take for granted, you know, the simple things of, um, you know, how to, address, how to dress for an interview or how to dress in a certain situation, how to do something as simple as balancing your checkbook or even what, what is a checkbook, going shopping in a grocery store. A lot of these uh, kids, they, they're shopping is done in a convenience store. They're, they wouldn't even know how to handle a big box store where there are so many, um, so many choices to make. They're, they're completely overwhelmed. The same way for um, trying to get the services they need, whether they go into social services to get assistance. I mean, it's intimidating for us, for us adults who, who know what's going on. Imagine how intimidating it is for them to be handed a stack of paper and say, fill this out and come back. I mean, you get frustrated and it's almost easier not, you know, not, not to, to do it. Not to do it. Yep. So we help guide them through those things. We advocate for them and we mentor them along the way. So helping to, to build a foundation for them so they can survive once they're past homelessness. Right. We want to get them, you know, in a stable home as quickly as we can, but we can't do that until they're ready. A lot of them, it takes years, and, you know, years to get to them, to convince them to do it. Uh, they have to be ready, but we tell them when they are ready that we'll be there to assist them. One of the things that you were sharing with me earlier was um, really word of mouth, and the kids that you serve, the young people that you serve, bring others with them. Um, and that really is how you how you help to identify the young people who need help in our community. Right. Um, when we first started in 1991, we did do a lot more outreach than we did now. So we would go down to the local arcade or we would go to the parks 
or the fishing pier or wherever the, the kids would, would hang out together. Um, but now it seems that we don't have to do as much outreach. We're still prepared to do it and we still do do it. We go out in teams of two and we look for them. We carry food packs and hygiene packs with us. So if we, if we run into one, uh, they may not even admit in the beginning that they are homeless. They don't want to admit. And they are difficult to recognize. It's not like an adult homeless who's pushing a shopping cart or carrying a lot of belongings with them. Most of the time they just are have what they have on, on them. The clothes they have on them, they might have a backpack or a skateboard, but, but they blend in very well with the population. So you approach them and you, you try to get them to talk to you. Some of them might not even tell you their name or they certainly won't admit to being homeless, but you'll just give them a backpack, uh, a food pack and say, well, you know, take this and, and maybe you'll see someone out here on the street that might need it and, and they can pass it on to someone. Or we have little cards that we hand out that basically tell our drop-in hours. Uh, we open a drop-in center at the oceanfront on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. And we just recently expanded it Thursday. We were only opening two nights a week. But from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m., we offer them a hot meal every night and we do different activities. We partner with Seton Youth Shelters on Tuesdays where they have counselors uh, and they, have, uh, they provide services to our younger youth who are 17 and under and still in school, they can actually provide shelter for them. That's wonderful. And I know, Bobby, that you're an all-volunteer organization. That's You've right. got a Facebook page and a website. So if our viewers are interested in finding out more, certainly encourage them to look you up online. Thank you so much for being here with us this afternoon. I wish that we had more time to talk with you, but certainly thanks for the work that you do helping these vulnerable kids in our community. All right. Thank you. Thanks for joining me on this episode of Cox Connections. As always, I want to personally thank you for choosing Cox Communications for your entertainment, information, and communication needs. We know you could have chosen another provider, but because you chose us, we pledge to be a friend you can trust. We promise to provide you with innovative products backed up by a talented local team of professionals that will help you stretch your dollar. And we promise to continue to make a difference in the Hampton Roads community. From all your friends and neighbors here at Cox, we thank you again for joining us on this edition of Cox Connections.